All right, let's talk about how tier four replaced IDN server with Oli stack. Firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Shota Sawada from Japan, and I'm also engineer at tier four. We are making autonomous writing systems. This presentation based on these posts, or this case study in English, and the tech blog of our company in Japanese. Today, I will talk about replacement of our IDIN server. Ori open sources empower us to build secure ID stack quickly. Actually, we, we did it in three months, but everything is not perfect or smart. So I want to share with you how we did and how it is. This is the agenda of this presentation. Firstly, I will read, uh, what environment our IDN server is working in. Secondly, why we chose the stack as a new architecture. Thirdly, architecture changes of our IDN server. Fourthly, what works need for replacement? If you consider replacing your IDN server, this chapter will be helpful. And finally, conclusion. All right, firstly, I will introduce what environment our IDN server is working in. Our company, therefore, is developing software for automatic driving. An IDN server that we are developing is a web service for automatic driving. Using our platform, customer can start automatic driving services quickly. Our services are for developers automatic Developers of automatic driving software, um, service operator, car manufacturer, uh, and technology providers. So our services are for all people who work for automatic driving. There are many type of users. So we need an IDN server like this. We need multi-purpose account type because our users are both individuals and enterprises. High productivity is also important because we are startup. Actually, our team is two or three people. In addition, it's common things. It should be high reliability, high performance, and scalable. We have several services. For example, fleet management, Remote vehicle control and map builder. A lot of identity server is very simple. Authentication and issuing access token before using services. You know, there are other choices. Managed services or other open sources. But finally, we chose Oristack as a new architecture. Why? The biggest reason is data migration. Because the IDN server is running service, smaller user impact is better. So we have three questions for new architecture. The first question is, can we change the identifiers for existing account? Our answer is no. Because our system is a microservice architecture as a system passes user identifiers. So it would be difficult to find them all and replace them consistently. Next question is, can we reset user password? Unfortunately, our answer is never. Because we didn't verify emails of users at the launch phase. So some users might use unreachable email addresses, and they cannot reset passwords. And last question is, can we change the OS client ID and secret? Our answer is yes. But of course, you, you have been nice to migrate the OS secret, but we could ask to migrate it because clients are very crossed and not many. It's also important that we can contribute. 
case, uh, in case of open source, you know, an identity server lives long span in general. Uh, the system should be well maintained, tested, and reliable. And it's important that we can work on the source code when problems or questions arise. Also, in that sense, Ori is best choice for us because Ori is open and kind to contributors. And our team is familiar with Go language. Actually, Kratos didn't have all essential features when we started thinking about new architecture. Then I write down issue, discuss, implement it, and finally pull request was merged. That's why we could use Ori stack as a new architecture. I believe we can resolve new issues when we face them in the future. <clears throat> then next, I will show how we change the architecture. This is an identity server architecture before we replace it. This is a Django Shing system. Its features are just account management and account federation by OpenID Connect. This is super simple. But this system has problems. We used an OpenID Connect library, but this was no longer maintained and buggy. So we had to fork it and patch it. It was hard. But it was, uh, and in addition, as other as, as issues, memory leakage, stacking requests, and so on. So we need a lot of effort to maintain this system. So we wanted to replace it in the future, not urgent. But it was good timing to replace it because we had just removed legacy features and wanted to add new features. This is a new architecture. It became a microservice for Monolith. We use three Ori open source, Kratos, Hydra, and OathKeeper. Let's see loads of each component. Kratos is a headless identity server that implements user management and authentication. It provides login, logout, user registration, profile management, account recovery, email verification, and multi-factor authentication. We don't need to implement these from scratch. Kratos is a com core component of new system. Next, Hydra is OS2 server and OpenID Connect, open Connect provider. Many OpenID providers are full stack that includes identity server, but otherwise, as the Hydra, we can bring our own identity provider. In this system, Hydra is working with Kratos. OpenID is identity and access proxy called as IAP and access control decision API. OpenID works with Kratos and Hydra well because all they are only products. Poseidon, as the central picture, is a Scratch application, implementing all other features. We named this Poseidon after Ori products, so I hope Ori does not release the same named product in the future. Anyway, Poseidon provides UI, additional validation for Kratos, working with Kratos and Hydra, mapping account identifiers to be compatible with all the system issued and organization account for enterprise customer. From the next slide, I will describe request flows of each use case. The first use case is account management UI. Basically, Kratos provides core features and Poseidon provides its UI. Since we want to customize validation, Poseidon validates post requests before Kratos processes. So Poseidon acts as a reverse proxy for Kratos at this time. In the case of other pages, 
of keeper gets a request flow from Kratos and propagates to upstream. Next use case is Akam Federation. To complete authorization code flow, issue pass login and user consent. At this flow, all components take, take something low. The flow starts from Hydra and redirects to Poseidon. Poseidon handles login and consent request working with Kratos. And reports result to Hydra. For now, we need such an implementation to work with Hydra and Kratos. But in the future, Kratos may support this. Final use case I want to introduce is Admin API of Kratos, Hydra, and Poseidon. Before processing the request, or skipper requests, or skipper requests Hydra to introspect the token and authorize the request. With OSKeeper, we can set it up easily. As an operation, we issue OS to clients for each admin API user. We know that it's not best practice. But for now, this is enough for a small team like us. Because using admin API is very strong operation. This should be restricted, so clients could be fewer, even if business scale somewhat. In the next slide, I will talk about what we did for replacement. We implemented Poseidon for replacement since this is a Scratch application. In this section, I will pick up two topics, mapping for account ID and organizational account. To keep a compatible user identifier with all the system, Poseidon rolls as ID mapper. Unfortunately, all the system issued, issued number format ID, but ID should be your ID in Kratos. So a new system, Poseidon stores and create both ID for all the users. And new user who registers after replacement, we don't issue number format ID. We use UUID issued by Kratos. So we have two types of ID format. This is our technology depth. The hardest things for me is implementing organization account. In our service, Organization account is managed by organization administrators. So we have implemented to prevent users from deleting account or changing email addresses, and only organization administrators can do it. So that we need to validate before post Kratos. And you and we need origin policy. If we use a buyout policy, they cannot use all other services. Kratos or Hydra don't support this because this is not, this is our original feature. We need it implemented by ourselves. As our original account, Organization administrators want to get all, all members of their organization. It needs to be created by organization ID. But we cannot query by organization ID from Kratos because Kratos cannot query by user attribute. Finally, we decided to copy some data from Kratos to get organization members by one query. But this is not smart. Think about it now. We might need to batch get identity Kratos API.
the hardest thing, uh, a data migration is significant for replacement. There is just two topics, user and auth client. User's attributes were just identifier, name, email address, and passwords. Just simple. To migrate user data, Poseidon fetches user data from Django, which is old, uh, old system, and imports to Kratos via create identity API. You can migrate user data just to step, but we need one more step that is migrating user credential by updating Kratos database directory because the importing credential feature was not available at the beginning of the year. So we had to run Kratos data, internal data structure and behaviors. I ran Kratos deeply through this activity. But now you don't need it. You can import it easily. About password migration, we use PBKDF2 hashing algorithm, which is default in Django. To migrate it, we need to transform hashing password to a format which Kratos understands. Because PBKDF2 doesn't have global standard format. So hashing, pass, hashing format in Django is different from Kratos. In Django, format is above. But in Kratos, format is below. So we need to transform when importing password to Kratos from Django. After migration, Kratos does not continue using PBKDF2. Once user authenticate using PBKDF2, Kratos migrate a format which you configured automatically. You can configure argon 2 id or bcrypt as a hashing algorithm for Kratos. For, migrate, for migrating OS client, it was, we can create clients with client ID and secret, like this command line. But usually, Hydra generates client ID and secret automatically if you execute the command without client ID and secret. Then, finally, con conclusion. We completed replacing an ID server in three months by using OriStack. We need a lot of work because we want to feature such as organization account. This is not supported, supported features. Kratos is evolving day by day, so you may migrate your identity server with OriStack more easily. Thank you for listening. <laughs>